to This Day in Baseball's Daily Rewind. We explore baseball's amazing, timeless history with short, cool stories beyond the box score from 1869 to present day. And you may think, how about that? Well, holy cow. And just maybe, do you believe it? And I'm your host, Tom Hannon. Hannon. Welcome to This Day in Baseball's Daily Rewind. Today, we're going to talk Say Hey, Tony Gwynn, Barry Bonds, a 58-pitch complete game, brothers stop stopping hitting streaks, and a beloved pinch hitter as we backstep our way through August 5th through August 11th. We are only highlighting one event per day, but you can go to our website. You can go to our website, thisdayinbaseball.com, and see countless events that have happened on each day in baseball history. It's truly like walking through magic waters. And I want to thank you for joining me. My name's Tom Hannon, and I'm your host. Today's trivia before we get started. Three times during the 1970s, this left-hander won 20 games. He also won a Cy Young and an MVP. And during his run, he wore the same lucky hat. Not that baseball players are superstitious or anything, but he wore this hat for several years and it got so discolored, he was forced to use a new hat on April 16, 1977. And then by chance in 1977, he happened to lead the American League in losses and he was traded at the end of the season. Who am I? On August 5th, 1979, Willie Mays is inducted into the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility. Mays, by most, is considered one of the top two or three players who ever played the game. Mays would finish in the top five for MVP voting nine times during his 22-year career. And what amazes me is he actually only won the award twice. He was the best player for an entire decade. And it's just, uh, it's, it's amazing that he only won the award twice. Mays historically had slugged 666 home runs, batted 302 during his 22-year career. And of course, he made one of the most famous catches in World Series history. The astonishing thing to think about is that only 409 of the 432 ballots cast voted for Mays. Yes, he got 95%. But what were the other 23 guys thinking? New York Daily News columnist Dick Young wrote, If Jesus Christ were to show up with his old baseball glove, some guys wouldn't vote for him because he dropped the cross three times. It kind of says it all. I don't know how you don't vote for Willie Mays in the Hall of Fame. And to learn more about Willie Mays, go to thisdayinbaseball.com slash Willie Mays biography, and you're going to see career highlights, biography, videos, and much more. August 6th. 1993, raising his average to 348, San Diego outfielder Tony Gwynn collects his 2000th career base hit, a single off Colorado hurler Bruce Ruffin in the team's 6-2 victory at the Murph. And exactly six years later, on the same exact date in 1999, Tony Gwynn singles off Expo rookie right-hander Dan Smith in the first inning to get his 3,000th hit. The first base umpire, Kerwin Danley, was Tony Gwynn's college teammate, and his mom, Vendela Gwynn, was there as well celebrating her 64th birthday. Joining them with 13,540 fans at Olympic Stadium to see baseball history be made. Mr. Padre finishes the night 4 for 5, passing Roberto Clemente and moving into 21st on the all-time career hit list. Gwen will finish his career with 3,141 hits and a career batting average of 338. He will be known as one of the game's greatest hitters and gain election into the Hall of Fame in 2007. You can see Tony Gwen's hit in the Hall of Fame speech on this day in baseball. On August 7, 2007, in front of a very supportive home crowd at the then AT&T Park, Barry Bonds surpasses Hank Aaron as the all-time home run leader when he connects on a 3-2 pitch for number 756 off southpaw Mike Bassick of the Nationals. During the 10-minute celebration following the historic home run, a surprise video message is played on the scoreboard in which Hammer and Hank Aaron congratulates the Giants' left fielder for breaking the 31-year-old record. And that is the class that we know Hank Aaron for. Now, as a side note, I got to see Barry Bonds over Father's Day weekend in 2007 at Fenway Park hit his 755th career home run off Tim Wakefield. Whatever your feelings about him, he brought an electric 
factor every time he got up. Now, you can see this infamous or famous home run, depending on how you feel, on this day in baseball.com, August 7th. On August 8th, 1988, lights are used for the first time in history at Wrigley Field. And the Chicago Cubs and Philadelphia Phillies only get to play three and a half innings before it was rained out. Maybe it was the baseball gods that did not want this to happen either. Now, I will say, in 2009, I spent three days in Chicago, and I went to two games at Wrigley and took the tour. If you have never been, it's truly worth the trip. My son, who is a ball magnet, grabbed a ball during batting practice and a ball during the game. I don't know how he does it, but he always seems to get a ball. This was before the Cubs had won it all. And in the night game, they were winning 12-3 to in the ninth, and the Nationals had loaded the bases and the fans really thought they were going to find a way to lose. Now, being someone who spent a lot of time at Fenway Park over the years, it really was like being at Fenway pre-2004, and the fans thought they were going to lose the game. But if you had never been, it is really worth the trip, and I'd highly recommend you uh, taking in a day game at Wrigley Field. August 9th, 1949, already 0 for 4 in the day, Dom DiMaggio came up against Vic Rashi in the 8th, trying to extend his 34-game hitting streak. He hits a sinking line drive to center field where his brother, Joe DiMaggio, catches it off his shoe tops to rob his brother of a base hit, thus stopping the hitting streak at 34 games. Dom's Red Sox did win the game 6-3. Dom, also known as a little professor, then went on to hit in the next nine straight. I'll tell you, the DiMaggio's no hitting streaks. On August 10th, 1944, Red Barrett of the Boston Braves throws only 58 pitches in shutting out the Cincinnati Reds' two-zip. Barrett's pitch count sets an unofficial Major League record for the fewest pitches thrown in a nine-inning game. Barrett didn't strike out or walk a single batter. He gave up just two singles, faced 29 batters, and averaged exactly two pitchers per plate appearance. The outs broke down like this. 13 ground outs, 5 fly balls, 7 pop outs, in two line drives. The Braves won the game 2-zip in just an hour and 15 minutes. Another unofficial Major League record. And finally, August 11, 1968. As a pinch hitter, Gates Brown has two walk-off hits in Detroit's twin bill sweep of the Boston Red Sox at Tiger Stadium. His pinch hit home run off Lee Stang in the 14th ends the opener 5-4 and in the nightcap is decided when he comes off the bench in the 9th and singles to right off a future Hall of Famer Sparky Lyle scoring Mickey Stanley giving the the team from Motor City a 6-5 victory. Brown was a pinch hitter deluxe hitting 462 in 1968 coming off the bench. He is also 5th all time with 16 career pinch hit home runs And through the year 2000, his 107 career pinch hits ranked him 10th all time. Gates was a Motown favorite and a regular at Fantasy Camp for several years with the Tigers before his passing in 2013. Thanks for joining me on today's show. And before I answer the trivia question, I want to remind you, we offer you a great way to become part of it. You can support us through Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash thisdayinbaseball or Click on the Patreon link in the menu bar and check out the amazing offers we have for you to be part of baseball history. Now, to answer your trivia question, the person who had to change his hat in 1977 produced his worst season in his career to date. He posted a 383 ARA, he lost 19 games, and he was even traded to the Giants at the end of the season. Who am I? Vita Rochelle Blue. That is it for today's show. We hope you enjoyed it and let us know your thoughts by subscribing, rating, and reviewing us. You can also reach me directly at tom at thisdayinbaseball.com. I am new to podcasting and I'd like to hear what you like, what you don't like, and what you'd like to hear more about. If you'd like to be part of the show, you can also email me and I'll be happy to show you how. It's worth checking out our show notes as we have detailed links to everything we talked about and if there's anything you missed, it'll be right there for you. You can also look us up at our new Facebook group, This Day in Baseball, and it's fun, fast-growing group. And if you love baseball history, 